PT Telekomunikasi Indonesia Persero TBK, commonly known as Telkom Indonesia, stylized as Telkom Indonesia, or simply Telkom, is an Indonesian multinational telecommunications conglomerate. Telkom is a semi-privatized, majority state-owned company listed on multiple exchanges. It has major businesses in fixed-line telephony, internet and data communications. It is operated as parent company of the Telkom Group, which is engaged in a broad range of businesses that consist of telecommunication, multimedia, property and finance services. Since 2008, Telkom Indonesia began changing its business focus, infrastructure, systems, organization and human resources, as well as the corporate culture, as their effort facing rising competition. Since this privatization in 1995, Telkom Indonesia total consumer 129.8 million at the end of December 2011 increased by 7.8% from 2010 making the company the nation's largest telecommunication service provider by subscribers. History Telcom is one of the world's oldest telecommunication companies. The company can be traced to an establishment of the first electromagnetic telegraph service in Indonesia on 23 October 1856, by the Dutch colonial government to connecting Batavia Jakarta, and Bidenzorg In 1884, the Dutch colonial government founded a private company to provide postal and domestic telegraph services and, later on, international telegraph services. Early years Telephony services had been introduced to Indonesia in 1882 by privately owned companies under a 25-year government license. In 1906, all postal and telegraph services in Indonesia were taken over by the government as single, unified government agency named Posts Telegraph and Telefoon Diensts PTT. In September 1945, roughly a month after Indonesian proclamation of independence, the agency headquarters in Bandung were taken over by Indonesian nationalists. In December 1949, after years of national revolution war, the PTT was nationalized by Indonesian government as part of Indonesian effort to oust the remaining Dutch and nationalize Dutch corporate assets. State-owned company In 1961, PTT was converted from an official government agency into a newly established state-owned company, the Postal and Telecommunications Services Company. Four years later, on 6 July 1965, Indonesian government separated this company into two state-owned companies, PN Pos Gyro responsible for providing mail services and PN Telekomunikasi as telecommunications services. The mail services PN POS Gyro developed over a year, to become the POS Indonesia in 1995, which is still state-owned today and the official postal carrier for Indonesia's 230 million people. In 1974, PN Telekomunikasi was further divided into two state-owned companies. Perusahaan Umum Telekomunikasi Paramtel provided domestic and international telecommunications services, while PT Industri Telekomunikasi Indonesia PT Inti, manufactured telecommunications equipment. A further division in 1980 saw the international telecommunications business taken over by the newly established PT Indonesian Satellite Corporation Indosat. .In 1991, Paramtel became a state-owned limited liability corporation and renamed to what is now Perusahan Perseroan Persero PT Telekomunikasi Indonesia or Telkom. 
Until 1995, Telcom's operations were organized along 12 regional operating units known as Wilaya Telekomunikasi or Ytel. Each Ytel had full responsibility for all aspects of business and operations in their respective regions, such as telephone services, property management and security. In 1995, Telcom reorganized the 12 Whittles into seven regional divisions and one network division. Under a series of cooperation KSO agreements, Telcom transferred the right to operate five of its seven regional divisions I3, IV, V and 7 to private sector consortia. Under these agreements, the KSO partners manage and operate the regional division concerned for a fixed term, build a specified number of fixed lines and, at the end of the term, transfer the telecommunications facilities to Telcom for an agreed amount in compensation. Revenues from the KSO operations were shared between Telcom and the KSO partners. Topic. Privatization On 14 November 1995, Telcom became a privatized company when shares went on sale through an initial public offering on the Jakarta Stock Exchange and the Surabaya Stock Exchange which merged in December 2007 to become the Indonesia Stock Exchange. Telcom's shares are also listed on the NYSE and the LSE in the form of American Depository Shares ADSs, and were publicly offered without listing on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Telcom is now the largest company by market capitalization in Indonesia, with a market capitalization of approximately 190,512 trillion Indonesian rupees as of 31 December 2009. The government retains an aggregate interest of 51.19% of the issued and outstanding shares of Telcom. The government also holds one Dwiwarna share, which has special voting and veto rights over certain matters. In mid 1997, Indonesia was badly affected by the Asian economic crisis. Among those impacted were certain KSO partners, who experienced difficulties in fulfilling their obligations to Telkom. Telkom eventually acquired control of its KSO partners in regions I, III, and V, and amended the terms of the KSO agreements with its KSO partners in regions IV and VII to obtain legal rights to control the financial and operating decisions of those regions. Since the 5th of June 2014, Telkom shares are no longer traded on the London Stock Exchange (LSE) and since 16 May 2014, they cease to be registered on the Tokyo Stock Exchange Zay", in Japan. Telecommunication deregulation In 1999, Indonesia passed a deregulating telecommunication law that set in motion a sweeping array of reforms and enlivened competition policy, private investment, and long-term industry direction. Among the proposed reforms was the progressive elimination of the joint ownership, by Telkom and Indosat, of most of the telecommunications companies in Indonesia. This was intended to promote a more competitive market. As a result, in 2001, Telkom acquired Indosat's 35.0% stake in Telkomcell, resulting in Telkom owning 77.7% .7 of the shares of Telkomcell, while Indosat acquired Telkom's 22.5% interest in Satellindo and its 37.7% stake in Lintasarta. 
In 2002, Telcom sold 12.7% of Telcomcel to Singapore Telecom Mobile Private Limited Singtel Mobile, reducing Telcom's ownership of Telcomcel to 65.0%. On 1 August 2001, the government terminated Telcom's exclusive right to provide fixed line services in Indonesia and Indosat's right to provide international direct dial services. Subsequently, Telcom's exclusive rights to provide domestic and long-distance services were terminated in August 2002 and August 2003, respectively. On the 7th of June 2004, Telcom began to provide their own international direct dial fixed line services. On 16 November 2005, the Telcom 2 satellite was launched to replace all satellite transmission services that have been served by previous satellite, Palapa B4. Transformations In 2009, Telcom started doing the business transformation of the only company in the field of telecommunications to broader range of business. The company expanded to the telecommunications, information technology services, media and edutainment. Telcom's decision to transform its business was prompted by the shift in customer lifestyles, and supported by advances in technology and regulatory changes that enabled service providers to deliver enhanced service to customers. With this new business transformation, Telcom also plans to conduct the acquisition of several companies that are in line with Telcom's transformation of the new business. In August 2012, the Telcom 3 satellite was lost in a launch failure, being placed into an unusably low orbit following the failure of the Briz M upper stage of the Proton M rocket that had launched it. Its replacement, Telcom 3S successfully launched aboard an Ariane 5 rocket on 14 February 2017, 21.39 Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Operations Telkom Indonesia is a dominant and largest provider of fixed line services due to owning most of Indonesia's copper network. Telkom also runs telephone exchanges, trunk network and local loop connections for its fixed line telephones. Currently Telkom is responsible for approximately 8.3 million telephone lines in Indonesia. And like most of the other state ownership telecommunication company in the world, Telkom is obliged to provide public services such as public call boxes. Telkom Indonesia businesses are operated under government regulation by the Indonesian Ministry of Communication and Information. Telkom, as government-owned company, is required to comply with additional obligations such as provide telecommunication services and not to discriminate. As well as providing service in those regulated areas, Telkom has expanded into more profitable products and services where there is less government owned related regulation. Telkom Indonesia is the parent company of the Telkom Group, which is engaged in a wide range of businesses that consist of telecommunication, information, multimedia, property, and finance services. Telkom mainly operates in fixed line telephony, internet and data communications business, while other businesses are run by subsidiaries. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Business Divisions. Telkom Axis is organized into following business divisions. Consumer Division – Retail Telecoms Services to Consumers Carrier and Interconnection Services Division – Telecoms Services Partnership Enterprise Division – Telecoms Services to Enterprises Business Services Division – Telecoms Services to Small-Medium Businesses 
Telecom Flexi Division, Telephone and Data Services based on fixed wireless CDMA protocol, concerning with new government frequency management, Telcom has spun off Telcom Flexi since 1 October 2014 and has received payment consideration from Telcomcell 25% of RP 2.828 trillion and the rest will be paid on 31 December 2014. Because it received payment from Telcomcell, all Flexi's cellular communications are transferred into Cartuas, Telcomcell's subsidiary. Topic subsidiaries and investments Telkom Group Telen Telekomunikasi Indonesia International, International Telecommunications Services and Investment Company Telkomcell, Mobile Phone Services based on GSM and UMTS Protocol Infomedia Nusantara, Information and Communication Services Solution Multimedia Nusantara, Strategic Investment and Holding Company Telkom Sigma, IT Solutions, Consulting Services and Data Center Finet, Financial Services Mojopia, Internet Commerce Business Melon Indonesia, Music and Entertainment Business with SK Telecom, Admedica, Healthcare Network Provider Telcom Property, Property Development and Management Company Pins Indonesia, Trading, Distribution, and Integration CPE Business Sikkim, Global CRM Consulting, Technology Services, Education and Outsourcing company Dia Mitratel, wireless telecommunication provider Telcom Axis, wireline telecommunication provider Napsindo, marketing business solution Other investments, Patracom, strategic IT and telecommunications solutions Banktelindo, telecommunication planning, construction, installation and maintenance company Pacific Satellite Nusantara, satellite telecommunications company Citra Sari McMur, satellite and Terrestrial Network Company. Topic Slogans. Telcom Sesha Melayani Anda, 1994 to 2002. Telcom Committed to You, 2002 to 2009. Telcom The World in Your Hand, 2009 present. Topic Logos Topic Broadband Access PT Telecomunikasi Axis has set aside RP twenty one point one nine trillion two hundred thirty three million dollars until twenty fifteen to build a national broadband network with speed up to twenty to one hundred megabits per second, which will cover four hundred ninety seven cities nationwide. One hundred fifty million dollars will be disbursed in twenty twelve on forty seven thousand kilometer fiber optic network across the country, so Internet access could be equitably fast. Topic See also Infomedia Nusantara Internet in Indonesia Telkomcell, 